So nice to be in the house of the Lord on his holy day. <laughs> Learn at his feet from his word. You know, being created in his image, in his likeness, we are called, of course, naturally, to be like him. <laughs> Try to be like him. Be loving like him, kind like him, patient like him, forgiving like him, merciful like him. The list I mean, goes on and on. And, but there is something else. Something else. There's one more quality of our Lord that should be reflected in our lives, which is not discussed uh, widely or, or very often. But uh, it's not, 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 not less than, in, in terms of importance, not less important than all the others that I just listed. And this is being alert like our Lord is alert. In a minute, we'll find out what does it mean, what, what we're talking about here. The, the question I would like to address this morning what does it mean to be alert and why the Lord commanded us, us to be alert? All right? So uh, let's have a short word of prayer and, and then turn the Bible on. Father, we, we just want to thank you for the privilege of being in your house and learning from your word. We ask that you will bless us, that you will give us fresh mind, open hearts, so we can accept your message. We can understand it and follow it and follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read our main uh, passage. I hope today I will be more, more technical than last time. <laughs> Let's try at least. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Let's read our main passage. Watch, therefore, for you do not know the, what hour your Lord is coming. Well, some, some translations say, be alert. What does this mean? This means that when the Lord comes, going to be too late. <laughs> To do anything, to make changes, to do what we have to do, it will be too late. So what he's trying to say, our Lord Jesus here, do whatever you have to do before that happens. Do things in time. <laughs> Don't neglect your responsibilities. I mean, it's, it's, it's so wide, so broad. So, uh, but that's what it means. I always thought that uh, this verse referred all, always to something that has to do with our personal, with our own selves, meaning we should watch over ourselves, which is, of course, which we should do, definitely. We should watch over ourselves, our uh, physical well-being, our spiritual well-being, our safety. I mean, it, it, it's because we are living in a sinful world, Right? In a very dangerous world. We have an enemy who is after us. To destroy us physically and spiritually. So we have to be alert. We should watch over ourselves. <laughs> That's why we have doors. Uh, locks on our doors. We have dogs. Some of us have both. <laughs> Some of us have cameras. Right? I, I always smile when I see those cameras in some stores where it says, smile, you're on camera. And I smile, I follow their, their request, I smile, but I know the meaning of it. Behind those, uh, those nice words, what it's what is saying actually, don't even think to take something that, <laughs> and <laughs> without paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> because you are being watched. Don't even think to attack me or who else. Who knows what else is there. 
Uh, obviously, not, not those uh, front words, those nice words, is not everything that what they're trying to say, right? We know that. That's why I always smile when I see it. <laughs> Sometimes there is no camera or those cameras are not working. But it's still there, just to, you know. <laughs> Let me share with you something. We just immigrated. Now we're in Michigan. Small town Berrien Springs. Who knows what Berrien Springs? Yeah, it's a, a, a university I mean, town, it's uh, Andrews University, uh, small town, 3,000 population. It was so safe. When we arrived there, we thought that we are in heaven, or at least pre-heaven. There is heaven, there is pre-heaven, right? <laughs> so we never clo lo uh, clo locked our doors because of that. We just were so happy. Because I never heard uh, uh, any, anything bad. Uh, or we just uh, left the doors, doors open. Plus, we were not rich. We had really nothing valuable in our house. <laughs> or, or the only valuable things we had is our, our documents, passports. And we thought, of course, who would need Russian passport? You know, no, Nobody, perhaps. So we, we just didn't care. How shocked we were when we, one day we came with Lisa and discovered that they have found the house in, in a mess, big mess, and found out that our passports, the, the only valuable things we had, all of them were gone. And God knows, I mean, what we thought at that time. What kind of thoughts went through our minds? Is this CIA? Is this FBI? Why in the world they would need our passports? I mean, we were thinking and thinking. Nothing was touched, but all the passports, and with our visas in them, were gone. And this was the time when we just applied for, for, for residency, permanent residency, and the passports are gone. And there is nothing you can do without those passports. I just, we didn't know what to do. Should we call the police? And we just decided, call our embassy first. Russian embassy in D.C., Washington, D.C. We called, they said, no, don't call, we don't need a, a police report. Just come, uh, come here and we'll see what, what you got. Uh, but it's, we, we, have, I, we cannot guarantee you that you will receive new passports. Most likely you will have to go back to Russia. Get them there. And that was impossible. That meant go and never come back. That's what it meant. Literally. So we, we, we went there with Lisa. We went there and what they said, they said that uh, we really cannot help you unless you have copies, I mean, of all, the, all, of all pages of those passports. And, and unless you have your, your passport. And my was the only one that was with me because it was, I don't know, I needed for something, it was in my pocket, mine. All the rest, the, the Lisas and children, it was lost, gone. I said, I have mine. Now all the copies, I said, I have them. All pages, I said, I have them. Why? Because I, I, the, the copy machine in the, at, uh, at the Andrews Library was so, so cool, so good. <laughs> I never seen in my life anything like that. I was just playing with it, copying and copying everything I could. <laughs> and I copied took my passport out and copied all the pages and all the other passports I brought, all made copies, made copies. So there was, of course, another reason why I copied them, because when we went to the Social Security uh, office, they, all, they asked all uh, copies of all pages. So I decided to just have them. And I liked it. I copied and copied. I had big stack of I said, I have all of them. <laughs> all of them. And, and they, they were surprised. Really? I said, yeah, I have all of them with me. So it, it still cost us $3,600. We, we had to borrow because they never had that money. And get, but, but we had a neighbor, a lady, wonderful lady, very, very wonderful and harmless lady. Her head was always in the window facing our house. And she knew everything about us. Absolutely everything. One night she called at 12 midnight. She called, Gregory, you left your lights on. 
meaning on my car lights. You go, better turn it off, otherwise your battery will just die. Oh, thank you, Linda, thank you, I appreciate it. So then uh, Lisa said, why don't we ask Linda, maybe she saw something, who did it? And sure enough, we even asked Linda, on that day, did you see anybody here? She said, yeah, your friends from Kalamazoo, they were at your place half an hour. They knocked the door, he knocked the door, she was behind him. She gave me detailed description. No camera could actually <laughs> show what happened. Uh, I think when you have a neighbor like that, you don't need any cameras. <laughs> that, that was my <laughs> conclusion. So she said, yeah, he knocked the door. Then he opened it. Then he entered. Then his wife followed him. And they spent about half an hour in your house. Then they left. Left just rapidly. They just left. Sat in their car and were gone. And she, she even knew who they were. Your friends from Kalamazoo. So, of course, I had some ideas why they did that. So, I, and I don't want to talk about that, but... Whatever that is, we, are, we have to watch our property. We learned our lesson. Next morning, our doors, doors were locked. Please lock your doors. Okay? Because we have to do what we can do. And, but, the, 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 of course, this verse goes beyond that. Watch, of course, this is more sp spiritual realm, including physical matters. But it's not only about ourselves, what I learned. Just watching, seeing God's alertness, I learned that this is, <laughs> this is going beyond our personal interests. And I, will, and I will explain that in a minute. Let's go to our next, next verse. So, behold, well-known verse. You know that verse, don't you? Behold, he who keeps Israel. I'm using modern King James Version. Something new came out. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. This is... <laughs> and you see, let's pay attention to every word. Behold, he who keeps what? Israel. The original text says, says that Neither slumbers nor sleeps the one who watches over Israel, his people. So the reason he does not sleep, not because of his nature. God cannot sleep, and sh right? He does not need that. And the reason is not because he cares about himself, but the reason he is, he watches his people. So I learned that when Jesus requires us, to be alert, this is not only about ourselves. This is something beyond ourselves, including ourselves. Because we need that too. So, <clears throat> I uh, remember, remember God asked Cain, where is your brother Abel? Remember what he said? Am I, am I my brother's keeper or watchman? Why, how would I know? You know what the answer to that question is? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are his older brother. You are responsible for your younger brother. You are his keeper. You are his watchman. We are, brothers and sisters, we are keepers of our families, of our children, of our church, brothers and sisters, and of our community. We are. Watchmen called, called to be alert to help ourselves and to help others. We are. So Cain's question was wrong, very wrong. Am I my brother's keepers? Well, what he did instead, we know. We know that. Of course he was. Are we really responsible for others around us? Are we really responsible? Because some people I hear, they say, my burden is so big, I just don't have time for others. I have big family. I have, I mean, big property. I have 
I can take care of somebody maybe in the church, but not beyond that. Let's, let's, let's read Ezekiel 33, our next verse. See what the word says. Are we are so sensitive? Are we really responsible for others? Let's see. If I announce God, God is speaking to the prophet. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die, and you will fail to warn them about changing their ways, then they will die in their sins. But I will hold you responsible for their death. They will die in their sins anyway. But I will hold you responsible if you failed to warn them about changing their ways. Are we responsible for folks around us? Looks like we are. Looks like we are. So this is very serious. This is very serious. Uh, Elder Johnson, it's uh, our vice president, conference vice president, recently met with uh, the Slavic church board. And he was just talking about Linwood for a few, few for, I mean, it uh, took a few minutes and we're discussing several issues, and he said that the Linwood Church is located in a zip code that covers over 1,000, 100,000 people, over 100,000 people. You know what that means? That this church is responsible for those folks. Of course, we cannot control every household, and we should not. That's not our responsibility. And, and, and we should not sit in our houses comfortably in, on our couches and just praying, saying, Lord, take care of our city and the vicinities. I think the Lord expects us to do something more than to pray, which is nothing wrong with, pray, with, with, with praying, of course. And we, we have many folks who love to pray. But let's don't turn everything what you can do into just prayers. It should go beyond prayers. We can do way more than just pray. Whether it's in the church. Of course, all starts here in the church and our families. Somebody said, our first missionary field is our families. That is true. But it doesn't mean that it is the only <laughs> missionary field, you see. I'm wondering, what if the, the apostles have that mentality? What if they, Peter took care of his family, he had family, he had wife, he had uh, mother-in-law at least, that's what we know. What he, he was just, he would say, I have big burden, fishing, business, my family, I don't have time for others. Apostle Paul, who did not have family, but at least he had a nephew, we know that. I mean, what if apostles have the, that mentality, I have big family, I have business, I have my work, I have my, my burden is so big. I just don't have time for others, travel and go and witness and talk and pray and help. I just don't have time for others. I have my own missionary field. That's, that's unfortunately the mentality of many Christians today. My family first. Yes, I agree, let it be first. But not first and last. <laughs> right? It has to be first and then there should be second missionary field. There should be the third. Are we aware of what's going on with our church members, brothers and sisters here? Do we know how they live? How is their physical well-being? How is their financial well-being? How is their spiritual well-being? The most important thing. Are we aware of that? Or we just have, you know, our own burden, big burden, which is enough for us? That's the question I'm actually discussing with you today, this morning. What is our responsibility? <clears throat> you know, when Abraham, when Abraham came to buy that uh, Machpelah field, it's the name of the field, Machpelah, to bury Sarah there, he asked the local king and all his people there, he asked them to sell that filled to him. Remember their answer? They said, you are God's 
prince among us. That's what the original text is. Some, some, would tra some translate it power, powerful or mighty prince, but the original says, you are God's prince among us. What do you think? And, and, and they, they had such a respect toward this man. And they said, take it. Take it. You don't have to pay. No, no, no. Abraham said, 400 sickles. That's the weight of uh, uh, money, silver. I, I am paying it. No, that's nothing. What is it for us? I mean, you are rich and we are rich. It's nothing. Just take it. He said, no, I'm going to pay. I was wondering what, how Abraham gained such a respect there. Some would think, oh, he was a rich man. You know what? Being rich, I, yeah, it, it can cause. I, I mean, it can uh, cost some people just uh, respectfully. But, but in reality, actually, it causes more envy and jealousy than respect. Doesn't it? I mean, if, if somebody is very rich. And among, imagine that he is, Abraham is richer than the local kings. I don't believe it. I don't believe that he was richer than the local king. That would have created definitely at least jealousy, which would bring eventually to enmity and enmity. But they were so respectful. That, what I'm saying, it was not the case, obviously. His wealth was not the reason for such a uh, respect. Then what was? Maybe his religion? I doubt. You know why? All these folks were idol worshippers. And, and they didn't care about his God or other gods. They didn't care. Then what? Well, the spirit of, uh, spirit of prophecy gives an answer to that question. Walking with God. Abraham, I, I am hoping that my next sermon here will be about walking with God. What does it mean? So Abraham was walking with God. Following God like we heard in the song. Following him. Following his God's footsteps. And he was reflecting. He was able to exhibit God's love. Toward these Gentiles, pagans. That's what created this deep respect. Because he did so many good things to these people. He was so nice to them. So kind to them. So helping. And that's why they said, you are like God's prince among us. Come on. We want to do something good in return. Because you did so many good things for us. Just take it. Do we have this the same reputation here in the area where we do we live? Whether it's our neighborhood, street, community, I mean, you go wider. Do we have that reputation? Next question, should we have that? <laughs> Serious question, right? So, he was definitely walking with God. And if we, if we... <laughs> are working with God. Definitely we will reflect his character in our lives. Uh, of course, all, as I said, all starts here in the church. Here in the church. Let's read our next verse. This is great apostle Paul ex exclaiming here. He, he's, he is saying, who is weak and I am not weak? Meaning, I, I sympathize with that person. Meaning, I feel it becomes, his burden becomes my burden. That's what Paul is saying. Who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation? Literally says, my heart does not burn for that person. When I hear somebody suffers in the church, that burden becomes mine. I suffer with him. I, I, I have that's the same pain. That's what he's trying to say. That is what, that what it means. It means to, to follow, follow God, actually. That's what it means. To, to, to be his witness. And they, let's see. Let's see <clears throat> what, what else. Of course, it's, as I said, it should go beyond these walls. Let's say what else. God does. <laughs> the sun shall not strike you by day, 
nor the moon by night. You know what that, that means? That, the, the, <laughs> that means that the enemy, the enemy <laughs> works hard day and night to destroy us. The danger is there nighttime and daytime, I mean 24-7. He's after us. And that's why the Lord, day and night, he is alert, watching over us. So nothing bad will happen. What he cares about the most, let's read the next verse. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. <laughs> I like the last part. This is what the enemy is after. He's after our soul. He's after our soul. And uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. The Lord also is after our soul. One is trying to destroy. The other one is trying to save. Satan is trying to destroy. God is trying to save. Both of them are after our soul. That's why both of them are alert day and night. And we are called to be alert. Watch over our surroundings. Watch over those who are around us. That's what it means. Let me, I, I uh, printed from Wikipedia uh, some synonyms of the term alert. Oh, there were so many I never expected. Simple word alert. I expected just two, three synonyms. And the list is so big that I'm not going to read all of it, just part of it. The ones that impressed me the most. Listen what it says. And I will read also antonyms, the opposite of being alert. And I want you, while I'm reading, you connect, make spiritual connection. What that, would that mean in, in, our, in, in our spiritual life? Okay? So, the first one, active. Alert means active. Spiritually active. Bright, careful, intelligent, observant, and I will skip many, watchful, wise, quick, ready, <laughs> ready to act, and ready to react, right? Now, spirited, interesting, clever. On the lookout, switched on. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> so, and 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 then many many more. I just skipped them. I uh, I just uh, <clears throat> highlighted those main ones. Antonyms: the opposite. Careless. <laughs> if I am not alert, that means I am just careless. <sighs> Foolish. Ignorant, in, in attentive, inattentive, indifferent. Oh, that's, that's, the, the indifference uh, uh, killing, killing us, killing our churches. Lazy, hmm. thoughtless, negligent, unaware. Unobservant, unintelligent, slow, slow to act, asleep, sluggish, weary. Let's think for a moment what all these things mean in our spiritual life. Either we're lazy, negligent, indifferent, Careless, or we're watchful, awake, alert, we're ready to act, ready to help, ready to react, we're fast, we're quick, we're intelligent, we're clever, because we walk with God, and we get energized from Him, That's, and we'll talk more next time about that part, that part. You know, may, uh, may the Lord help us, help us to follow him, be like him in being alert, just like he is alert. 
praise the Lord. Because if he was not alert, we wouldn't be even here. If apostles were not <laughs> alert people, we wouldn't be today here. And because they're of their, their, their dedication, because of their sacrifice, because they, of their walking with God, they're following God, today we're here. Let's, let's just follow our Lord. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you once, one more time for being alert, for watching over us day and night as we read, for watching over our physical well-being and our spiritual especially watching over our souls because the enemy is trying to destroy us. But you are there for us. And we want to be like you. So help us, Father, to be there for our closed ones and beyond. In Jesus' precious name, amen.